Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to have a look at uh, shared neutrals, or borrowed neutrals as they're sometimes called. And uh, this fits in with a comment uh, which was made uh, a week or so ago, which uh, really asked if we could do a video on if you can get a shock from a neutral. So uh, this is that video, and let's have a look at some of the common situations that may occur. Now generally if you're going to touch the neutral in a circuit, you won't get a shock because, as I've shown in several other videos, the neutral is always at the same potential as the ground or certainly uh, certainly should be, and this is because the uh, neutral and ground are obviously connected together at some point, either at the entrance to the building, or back at the supply transformer, or maybe both of those points. However, there are circumstances where the neutral can attain a voltage above the ground, and of course it's those situations where you can get a shock from it. Now just have a look at a uh, very simple circuit, so I've uh, put in a uh, line here, let's use the red for that, and of course uh, have a corresponding neutral as well. And uh, for this one we'll just draw some sort of thing in here, say a uh, filament lamp would be uh, an example, but it uh, could be any kind of load, it doesn't really matter. And of course if we just connect the line in neutral to that, and of course the light will switch on, and uh, nothing unusual about that. So uh, if you were to uh, touch the neutral in this case along here, you won't get a shock because uh, all of this is going to be at the same potential as the ground. So not a problem there. Obviously if you touch the uh, line side here then you will definitely get a shock because it's going to be at the mains potential, sort of 240 volts or whatever it is. Now to make this slightly more accurate of course there would normally be a uh, switch of some kind in here so we've just put that in uh, like that. So this might just represent say a lighting circuit for example, uh, obviously a very small one with only a single light on it, but of course switch is closed, the light comes on and the switch is open as it is there the light does not work. So we're perfectly safe there and you can obviously touch the neutral even when the light is on because you're not going to get a shock as this is obviously all tied to the neutral connection in the consumer unit or fuse box. Now one possible way you could get a shock from the neutral here is if the neutral wire became broken or damaged, say about this point. Now of course if you touch this side, again you're not going to get a shock because it's still connected to the neutral for the rest of the system, but this side here isn't really a neutral anymore because it's just a piece of wire that happens to be connected to one side of this lamp. And of course with the switch open uh, nothing will happen, but if the uh, switch is closed then of course the light's not going to work because uh, there's no actual path for the current to flow. But the point here will now have a voltage on it because uh, essentially it's just floating around the air, there's no return path, so uh, this is going to be at or near the mains voltage. And if someone was to uh, touch this, uh, just again standing on the ground here, then they will get a shock because uh, this person is then essentially completing the circuit, so you've got the live here through the uh, lamp or whatever, through the person and of course back to the ground down here. But of course this isn't really a neutral in this case because uh, although it might be uh, sort of black or blue in the case of the uh, modern colour wiring, it is actually just connected uh, back to the live there, and it will just sit there with a voltage on it until uh, either a person completes the circuit, or obviously the damaged part is repaired. Certainly this is something to be aware of if you've got a piece of equipment which has uh, mysteriously stopped working. Just because it stopped working doesn't mean that the power has actually been disconnected. It could just be that the neutral is broken, leaving all of the internals of the equipment live and obviously dangerous if you're going to be touching them. Now another more common situation is where you have more than one circuit, so for example this might be the lights in the downstairs of a property, and it's fairly common there to have another circuit for the upstairs lighting, and that's so that if say one of the circuits was to fail, you've still got some lights at least in part of the building. So if you just draw in the other circuit up here, and we'll take exactly the same, just imagine there was just a single light on that one. So there we've got two completely separate circuits, uh, obviously if the switch is on the uh, lights will work, uh, obviously in this situation there of course they will not. That's perfectly fine, uh, no particular problem there. But uh, what can happen, and is actually reasonably common certainly in older properties, is that somebody wants to then add an extra light in the stairway of the property, so that's neither really upstairs or downstairs, and they wanted to have it to be switched from both upstairs and downstairs, which means putting uh, at least one or more cables between the two floors. And what can happen here is that uh, we might say connect the new light into the uh, circuit downstairs, and we'll have a switch for that as well. So 
so the live comes in obviously to the lamp and the switch there and then of course the other side needs to connect back to the neutral but because this is now upstairs and say the switch was downstairs it would be far easier just to uh, connect the uh, circuit here on the neutral back to the uh, neutral on the upstairs circuit because of course it's going to be much nearer you don't have to run a big load of cables all the way downstairs and this kind of setup uh, is actually quite common in uh, certainly older properties in the UK where you've got the live coming from the downstairs circuit but the neutral side of it is actually connected to the neutral for the circuit upstairs. Now the problem with these occurs when uh, one of these circuits is switched off and you may want to work on it. So for example you might want to do some uh, work on the upstairs lighting. So you would uh, go to the fuse box and uh, disconnect the live or line to that uh, particular circuit like that. And of course uh, that's not going to work anymore because uh, obviously it's uh, no power there. And you could obviously test here and you'd find there was no power between the line and the neutral or in fact between the uh, line and the neutral and the earth as well. I haven't obviously drawn the earth here but uh, of course it would normally be in there anyway. And of course this is all very fine and uh, you can certainly touch any of these uh, no problem at all and uh, nothing would actually go wrong. And even if this light downstairs was then turned on this light will still work because you've still got that path going back to the neutral and again this is all at the same uh, sort of zero or neutral potential so again no problem there whatsoever. But the problem will occur then if you were to uh, just dismantle the lighting upstairs, say to put in another fixture or whatever, that's inevitably going to involve uh, disconnecting the neutral at some point, either say at a ceiling fixture or uh, wherever else. And as soon as you've done this, you've now created a dangerous situation because if this light downstairs is switched on, all of this here is now going to have a dangerous voltage on it because you've got the line coming in here through this uh, light here on the stairs which was turned on. Up to here and then of course uh, this point here is going to have a dangerous voltage on because it's connecting it via the lamp here and of course it's not connected to neutral anymore so if you touch this you will get a shock and the same would apply to at this point over here or within the switch or the point you've disconnected there because again it's all connected via the uh, lamp here and it depends whether the uh, switch is closed or not for this point but essentially the whole of the circuit there is going to have a dangerous voltage appearing on it simply the fact you've got this interconnection with the circuit downstairs. And bearing in mind this only shows up as a dangerous voltage when this switch here is actually on. If this was left turned off then there's no connection there and of course none of those voltages will appear and you wouldn't actually know that anything was wrong. Now this of course is just one uh, example and it's probably the most common with the uh, interconnection between the upstairs and downstairs lighting circuits. But a similar thing can occur between any circuits. Uh, the thing you don't want is to have the uh, line from one circuit and then connect it onto the neutral for a different one because this could occur between any two circuits. That's why it's essential that if you're going to make any alterations or install any kind of electrical wiring you need to make sure that the uh, line and neutral all belong to the same circuit and there's no interconnections between different circuits anywhere in the building. Now many houses have this type of arrangement and in most cases you wouldn't actually notice that it was there because whilst all of the uh, wires and cables are connected all of the lights will work as you would expect they'll switch on and off and no problems will occur and it's only really when you start uh, undoing and dismantling parts of things that uh, this kind of situation can occur. And the other time that it uh, usually shows up is when people have a new consumer unit fitted they may have some old uh, fuse box or whatever and they decide to have a new consumer unit fitted which of course includes one or more RCDs. And the uh, situation in the UK now is that uh, generally new consumer units uh, will have at least two RCDs in them. So you might have a uh, consumer like this, a uh, main switch, which will be a uh, two pole device, and then you'll have one RCD here, and the second RCD here. And then each of those would provide uh, power to a selection of circuit breakers. Just put three in this case and we'll put uh, a couple over there. And the situation is that the uh, RCD here will cover those circuit breakers there. And then the other RCD will cover those circuit breakers over there. And the idea with these is that uh, because you've got two, then in the event of one of them going off you've still got power in uh, probably 50% of the house. And in order to uh, divide this up in a sensible fashion you would typically have say the lighting downstairs here and the lighting upstairs over there so that uh, if one of the RCDs was to trip 
you've at least got some lighting in part of the building. And of course you'd put sort of downstairs sockets and upstairs sockets in the same kind of configuration. This is not a configuration I particularly like or generally install, but uh, nevertheless there are plenty of these around. So if we're going to put our, uh, say, downstairs lighting here, and our upstairs lighting over there, well that seems perfectly sensible, but the problem then is that if you've got this kind of arrangement uh, with this uh, shed, the problem is if you've got this kind of arrangement where there's a circuit taking power from the downstairs and returning on the upstairs one, then it's simply not going to work if you've got two RCDs because of course RCDs work on the current going out and coming back being exactly the same. But if you've got a circuit here providing power to a light fitting and then it's coming back on this side, you're going to have an imbalance between the two. And the usual result is that both of the RCDs will trip sometimes just one, but uh, quite often it's actually both of them, as soon as somebody turns on the light in the stairway. And if the light in the stairway is not turned on, then of course all is well, it all works uh, perfectly fine, and you wouldn't know there was a problem. Now the way to avoid this, of course, is to probably test the uh, installation before just shoving in a new consumer unit, and of course then you would identify that the problem was here. And uh, of course the ideal option is to uh, remove this link here and then just reconnect it to the proper circuit that it was intended. So in this case you would uh, remove that neutral there and you would connect it back to the uh, circuit that it came from, which of course would be the downstairs one. Unfortunately in a house that's usually going to involve uh, cutting out walls and lifting up floorboards and a fair amount of extra work. So uh, the other thing that uh, can be done and is done quite often is to put both lighting circuits onto the same circuit breaker. So you would have upstairs and downstairs all on the same circuit breaker there, so you're essentially making the whole lot into a single circuit and thereby avoiding the thing tripping. Again, that's not ideal, but uh, it's certainly uh, one option that uh, doesn't involve uh, digging up floors and uh, chasing out walls and generally making a lot of mess and extra expense. And the other circumstance where this sort of thing can occur is on a three-phase arrangement, and in that circumstance you would have, uh, say, a circuit breaker, and that's a, it's a, it's a three-pole uh, circuit breaker there, and we'll call it a 10-amp uh, uh, variety. And on this side you'll have your three uh, phases coming in, so you'll have uh, number one, number two, and number three. And uh, three-pole breakers uh, will have a mechanical uh, interlock across all three, so that uh, you can only turn them on and off as a whole set. You can't just sort of switch one off and uh, leave the others on. And if one side trips, then it will uh, disconnect all three of them. And you can also get these in a double pole uh, variety as well, but uh, certainly the uh, three phase ones are more common. And of course from here you could have a variety of circuits. So let's have the uh, circuits coming out here. And you could have some uh, lighting equipment installed there. And the neutrals from these, uh, it's quite common to have just a single neutral for all three. So the neutral would come from here, and it's actually the same cable that would go to all of the light fittings. And then of course the neutral returns to the consumer unit or fuse board that you've got. Now this is perfectly fine because uh, this as a whole is just one circuit. Though it has uh, three lines in it, one for each of the three phases, it's still a single circuit. And you don't actually need more than one neutral here because uh, obviously it all goes back to the same place anyhow. And the event of disconnecting here is either all of them are going to be on or all of them are going to be disconnected. It's not possible to uh, just say switch off uh, one only and leave the others still connected. And of course as before you would have uh, switches and other things in there to uh, switch the lights on and off. And again the other two as well, so again not a problem. However the problem can occur if some uh, moron decided to uh, replace this breaker, say it was defective or needed to be uh, changed to a different rating. And instead of putting in a uh, three-phase breaker there with the uh, three poles all linked together, they decided to just go in and just put three single breakers in there instead. And of course in this situation you've now essentially got three different circuits all of which are now connected to a single neutral. So if you were to uh, switch off one of these, or two of these, say uh, let's just turn off here and turn this one off, 
And I think, oh, that's fine, that's uh, no problem there. And you'll disconnect the uh, neutral here for the circuit to uh, obviously isolate it properly. But of course, uh, it's not isolated anymore because uh, this one here is still connected. And again, you've got the voltages here, and all of this will have uh, mains voltage on it, as will both sides here. So you've got uh, dangerous voltages on here, and here, and here, and in fact throughout the uh, entire circuit in that case. And so this has only occurred now because you've got three separate circuit breakers here, and essentially it's now uh, three separately controllable circuits. Whereas if you had that uh, link in place, of course, it uh, can only be switched off as a whole, and then it will be obvious that uh, there's no power going to be on any of those, so uh, the single neutral would be permitted there. And if you're going to have three separate breakers like this, which would be a fairly unlikely situation, then the correct thing to do is to, uh, of course, put the wiring through as we had before, so uh, each of those would go through to there. But if these are going to be separate, then you can't have this uh, single neutral arrangement. What you would have to do is to have a separate neutral for each of the three circuits, so you'd have one coming back to there. This one would have its own one coming back here, and then this would have its own one coming back over here. So three outgoing and three incoming, and then of course you can disconnect uh, each one individually. And whatever you do see on this particular circuit here will then not affect the other two in any way, and you wouldn't get any dangerous voltages showing up there. So let's look at the uh, borrowed neutrals, as they're often called, or shared neutrals, which is probably a more accurate situation, because it's not really borrowing anything, because there was no intention to return it after doing the borrowing. And uh, it doesn't have to be on lighting circuits either. This can occur on any circuit, although uh, lighting is more common, obviously, for the uh, sort of upstairs and downstairs split kind of arrangement. And certainly on the three-phase arrangement, uh, provided it's installed properly, then again, not a problem. But of course, uh, if you went in there and just replaced the uh, breaker, say, for three single-pole devices, or made some other kind of uh, unwanted alteration, then again, that situation certainly can occur. And if you're looking at a system on an older installation, or say one you haven't actually worked on before, and it doesn't have any proper documentation, then the way to avoid getting a shock off of the neutral ends is to, first of all, make sure you're isolating and disconnecting the correct circuit. And even though you've done that, when you actually get to removing wires from terminals, particularly if you've got two neutrals on a particular point and you're going to disconnect them, after disconnecting them, check that there's no voltage on both of those, because, of course, the voltage that's there only shows up after you've disconnected them. So uh, obviously just disconnect the terminals and then check again straight away on both of those to make sure there's no dangerous voltages present. So until next time, thanks for watching.